Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe from Workbench and I've got a little more in-depth tutorial for you guys this week. Um, still going to try to keep it as short as possible, but we'll see what happens. All right, so this is a little different. We're starting off in Illustrator and uh, I got a little iPhone kind of icon. We're going to be making a 3D device um, that's easily changeable in After Effects. So I'm going to copy this icon I already have and I'm going to make a new document. I'm going to make it the same size as my comp just so it's easy. And paste that in there. So we're going to resize this to fit the comp. And I'm actually going to get, well, I'm going to dump this. I'm going to do a new rectangle over here. I'm going to leave it 19, 20, 10, 80. I guess I could have reversed that, but it's easy to just rotate. I do this so that you can easily fit a comp behind it. That is 1920 by 1080. And you don't have to worry about figuring out the ratio or any of that stuff. So let's make this white real quick. Make it about the size it should be. Select everything. I believe the iPhone itself is already in a group. Yep, so everything is centered now. So this will be our new iPhone. So I'm going to save that. All right, so I'm gonna delete all of these inside paths and I'm just gonna save this as an outline. Should have nothing other than that one path in our layer. This compound, I'm gonna hit that so it becomes just a path. Not that it matters, but I'm OCD. And then we're gonna call this one iPhone outline and hit okay. And that's it for the Illustrator portion. Clear the clipboard. All right, we're gonna use a, a free plugin available through Cineversity. I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, and it's called CV Art Smart. And we're gonna use the object one, not the importer. And we're gonna click here and we're gonna to go to our folder where we had our uh, outline and open that up. So now you can see we've got our outline. And what's really cool about this is that you can actually drag and extrude it. Very, very simple. So we're gonna make this about the size of an iPhone about the ratio of an iPhone. Let's just do that. All right, so if you really want to, although not for the purpose of this because we want this front to be flat, but you can uh, go back through and add a fillet cap. You can't really see it too much there, but you can see it's beveled now. I mean, you can do that in the back and the sides, or you can design it to where you're only gonna, you know, you can subtract this down in After Effects or something if you really wanna have that extra like hint of shine on it, but we're going for a really flat style, so. We're not going to use that option. What I'd like to do is uh, make a new null and uh, as you can see this thing puts it right at zero and so what I'm going to do here is figure out how much I actually extruded that, 42, and then I'm going to move it in Z, 21, negative 21. There we go. So that my null is at zero. And both sides are uh, halfway across. I'll put that in the null. All right, so now I'm gonna do all my animation and stuff on here. What I'll normally do is I'll rotate it over like 90 frames or whatever, something longer than I think it's gonna be um, so that when I bring it into AE, I can crunch it down to whatever speed I want. The next thing I'll do is I'm gonna add another null and I'm gonna move it back in Z, negative 21. And this will be my front null. Name that my front null. Then I'm gonna command click and drag, make a back null, and I'm gonna make that positive 21. So that's gonna represent both sides. As you can see, I have the little point of the null on each side. So that's so you can add things to your uh, to your faces in After Effects. Um, drag these both into null. So if I rotate this around, they'll all rotate. So then we're gonna add a tag to this, Cinema 4D tag, external compositing. External compositing. So let's just rotate this thing real quick. We're gonna set a key here for its rotation. I'm gonna go all the way 180 on this thing. Oops, 180. 
and click that so that it sets that key. And there we go. By default, this is eased. So you can go in here and show your F curves. Open that down and there's rotation. And if you want, you can make this linear. Click on that. If you just want it to, if you're gonna do a bunch of other things, you're gonna ramp it yourself in After Effects, whatever you can do that. I'm gonna leave it the way it was though. So that's that. So we're gonna save this as, oops, desktop A, send my file here. I'm just gonna keep it called iPhone. And we'll call it iPhone 3D just in case. All right, save that. And I'm gonna make a new material for this thing. Um, I'm not gonna make it that bright though. Well, let's see what this looks like. Drag that onto the object. All right, and then uh, the other thing I do is I will make a new camera. Gonna reset everything about it. So that's right there. Uh, I don't have it selected or anything, so we can't, we're not looking through it. And then I'm going to go to its object. Its focus distance is 2000, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna make this a parallel camera. Its focus distance is still 2000. So what we're gonna do is move this camera back. Its coordinates, I think it should be negative 2000, yeah. Um, oh, and uh, a little bit more because I want that front face to be on, um, right on the line there. So move it back to the extra 21 uh, centimeters. So there you go. So now when we look through this, it looks like that. All right, so now we're gonna go and actually set up our scene. And I'm gonna set this to 19, 20, and 80. My actual comp, might as well lock that. All right, so now we're gonna go and change the zoom here. Uh, I think it's maybe 0.5 or so. It's gonna have this odd perspective because we're parallel on it, but that's okay. For a lot of things, I'll use this parallel camera so that you can just keep your stuff exactly the way it needs to be, but we can actually, uh, because we're gonna bring in the nulls and position everything where it needs to go, we can actually use a perspective camera. This one I wasn't really thinking about that. So you can still see the edge and it gets bigger and all that kind of stuff. All right, and there's one last thing we need to do before we go into After Effects that I forgot about, and that is convert this to an object. I guess because this is a plugin, um, After Effects doesn't know how to deal with that in the Cineware plugin, so we're just gonna hit C and turn that into an object. Save, and we'll be all set out of cinema. Okay, so now we're gonna import our stuff. I'm gonna go uh, grab this and grab that. I don't need the outline. I'm gonna drag this down here to that. It's gonna give us our little horizon line, all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna extract the scene data so we get our nulls. So we can put stuff on there, and as you can see, they rotate with our object. I'm gonna change this to final. I didn't do any lighting or anything in the other one. Uh, leave that up to you. Um, this is just to show you how this works. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring my iPhone into a new comp as well. And you're only gonna be able to see that right now. So we're gonna convert shapes. All right, now we're gonna split this out. Um, I've got the screen as one layer, it looks like, and the actual phone as another layer. So I'm gonna duplicate this, get rid of that, and this will be, actually I'll get rid of this one. Get rid of that, and that'll be screen. And this is gonna be iPhone. Get rid of the screen off of that. All right, you could do this with a, a plugin called ZL Explode Shape Layers. That's available, I believe, at uh, AE Scripts. Um, really handy, lets you get rid of extra bounding boxes and all sorts of other stuff that comes in in weird ways when you uh, get shapes. But it also lets you explode out your groups into different layers or implode them back into la into a single layer. So that's kind of cool. All right, we're gonna make this uh, an alpha inverted mat. Turn that on so we can actually look th this looks like. Um, these are all being merged, so I'm just gonna get rid of that and not sure why these are all being split around still, so I'm just gonna go around it and keep path four there. Group two, we're gonna get rid of path four. 
two, one. So this will be group three. This is the speaker. This is the bass. And we're going to keep two on this one. So we get rid of that, that. Uh, and that's the camera. Keep one on this one. That is the home button. And six was an extra one I didn't need. So there's that. So now we can change these to other, other colors. I think I'm actually going to make this phone white. So let's make it white. I'm going to turn this back on. Leave the speaker black. Uh, make the home button slightly less white. So got a little bit of contrast. Uh, the camera, eh, you can usually see it, but we'll make it a little, a little white too. Uh, we can make a separate comp. That is not that ratio, 1080 by 1920. So now we have, actually have the vertical screen and we can make a new shape. Uh, let's make that, uh, let's get rid of the stroke here. Let's make this something in there and then uh, make a new shape. Just doing this kind of quick, just to give you an example. Gonna round it up a little bit. I'm gonna put white. And hey, why don't we go to the old, uh, the old classic programmer thing? Hello world. Hello world. Make that blue. Make it bigger. Make it not impact. Let's go and eh, knock out. Why not? Okay. There's that. Let's scale that up. A little down down that's that for now how's that hey why well, don't we go fancy we'll do a little uh, drop shadow make it exactly 90 down I do that so high 10 feather it a little bit look at that fancy or shitty anyway let's get over here uh, we're going to bring that comp back in, in that screen. Remember, always label everything so that later on you can figure out what the hell you did. And we're going to scale that down. Even though we're exactly sized on it, it's a good idea to go just a little bit bigger. So that's that. I actually have the phone with the screen. We're going to go into here, bring our iPhone in, put it on the top, make it 3D. Hold shift, click, click on front null, and it should fit up pretty much exactly there. Now, as it moves in time, you'll see. We go through, look at that. Now, your issue is gonna be here, which is simple. All you gotta do is when you get to 90 degrees or thereabouts, I would probably do it here. This will be the last frame that we're gonna want that. And hold uh, option and right bracket. And so now it goes away. And you can do the same thing, make a back image out of that, uh, the same iPhone thing if you'd like. Um, and now you can go in here and do all of your animation and stuff in here. So you can parent this, we can do, uh, oops, position on here, we can keyframe that in. Reverse these, because I did it backwards. Yeah. All that. Now, if you go over here, it'll update. You can see it come up as it rotates. Now, you can also render out your frames if you want it to be a little faster, because obviously this is going to take a while every time, because it's kind of going to render out the cinema stuff. But this is the most flexible way, because you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. So, if you really need that super flexibility of not wanting to render this, whatever, you can actually go into here. And where it says camera, Cinema 4D camera, you can actually set it to comp camera. So it's not going to move because it's still using the camera data that we extracted. 
However, if you decide you want to do something different, you can actually rotate this and it'll still stick. If you put a null in there and you attach your camera to it, you can ro change your rotation or do whatever you wanted to do. The objects will still rotate because they're keyed to rotate in the cinema file, but if you wanted to make it just static, you could move your camera around it. So it's a pretty flexible technique if you want to do some quick devices and stuff and they're not, they don't have to be super super crazy. I've done a bunch of different things like DVRs and, and, you know, all sorts of stuff that has like, that have back and fronts modems and all sorts of different things that are like quick and easy to make in this style. And uh, if you don't really need like super realism, it's got a cool graphic style to it. So that's it for this one, guys. I, uh, I'm a 2d animator mostly, but I like to throw in like little 3d elements every once in a while, just to like add a little surprise factor to whatever my, you know, whatever I'm working on. And, uh, you know, clients seem to enjoy it. And this is super easy to change for them. So if they want to, like, change that hello world thing, oh, I don't want that. I want my logo. Very easy to just go back in your screen comp, change it. You can add, like, shine to the screen, um, all that kind of stuff without having to go into cinema. And it's very easy to change and animate and all that kind of stuff. And you can be very complex with a simple 3D object. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.